How to make pure gold. 10 amazing facts about the gold manufacturing process. Hi everyone and welcome to Top Tech. Today, we're talking about an extremely valuable metal that also happens to be very pretty. It's loved by pirates, leprechauns and rappers alike. That's right, we're talking about pure gold. More specifically, we're discussing the incredible process that it takes to manufacture pure gold into bars and coins. We'll be taking you through every step of gold's journey from the ground to a perfect pure bar. By the end of this video, you might even be ready to set up your own gold-making workshop. So, if you'd like to add a few carrots to your jewelry collection, make sure to stay tuned. 1. A few quick facts Let's start off with a few quick facts about this amazing substance. Gold is one of the most popular precious metals in the world. That's because it's soft and easy to shape. It doesn't rust and it's good at conducting heat. This means gold is widely used for lots of different purposes. Most people know that gold is used to make jewelry and coins. But did you know that gold is also used in mobile phones, dentistry, medicine and cosmetics? More often than not, the gold you come across in jewelry isn't pure. Instead, it's an alloy, meaning it's a mixture of gold and other metals. That's because it's really, really hard to produce gold that is 100% pure, as we'll see. 2. Where does gold come from? So, where does gold come from? The answer is everywhere. Gold is found all over the Earth. It's on every continent except Antarctica. In fact, the metal is present in almost all rocks and soil, but the grains are so small that they're invisible. This means you're probably sitting on some gold right now. Because it's so common in the Earth's crust, scientists believe that gold came to the Earth in meteorites from outer space. In a way, that means gold is an alien substance. How weird is that? 3. How the whole process works Manufacturing pure gold bars is not an easy process. That's because it's so hard to purify. When you find raw gold in nature, it's always mixed in with other substances. It takes a lot of energy and time to separate gold from the other types of metal it likes to join up with. The process starts with mining, when you take the gold in its raw form from the earth. Then you have to extract it, smelt it and refine it to produce pure gold. We'll look at each of these steps in more detail later. At every stage of the process, you need to stop and test that your gold is as pure as possible. If something's gone wrong and there's just not gold in there, you have to start again. That means the process is very energy intense and expensive. 4. Getting the right equipment Before you can start the gold manufacturing process, you need to make sure you have the right equipment. The main thing to think about is the heat. Gold has a very high melting point of 1947 degrees Fahrenheit. That means it needs to be extremely hot to turn into a liquid. So, you need equipment that can withstand those super high temperatures. It's what a crucible is for. The crucible is a container made out of graphite carbon, or clay, which holds the gold as you heat it up. Temperatures inside the crucible reach up to 1400 degrees centigrade. That's 2552 degrees Fahrenheit. Think of the hottest flaming barbecue you have ever stood in front of, and then times it by a thousand. That's how hot it gets. Of course, when something is that hot, you can't just pick it up with your hands. You need a pair of tongs to move the crucible and hold it. These also need to be made out of heat-resistant material. But what happens if you don't have a crucible? Well, there is a homemade method of melting gold with a potato. Simply cut a hole in the potato and place the gold inside. However, this sounds pretty dangerous, and we definitely don't recommend it. 5. The first step, mining. Your first step in the gold manufacturing process involves getting the metal out of the ground. And there are three different ways to do this. If the gold is located near the Earth's surface, miners will use open pit techniques to get it out. That means they drill holes into the ground, which they fill with explosives. Then, they detonate the explosives to break up the ground so it can be loaded into trucks. But, if the gold deposits are buried deep in the earth, underground mining is necessary. Sometimes gold is accumulated in the loose rocks of a stream bed or beach. 
When this happens, you have to pan for it. You might remember this from your history class. Miners scoop up sand, gravel, and rock, and mix it with water. The gold, because of its greater density, sinks faster than the other materials, and collects at the bottom, where you can collect it. 6. The second step, extraction. Once you've got the gold out of the ground, you have to separate it from any bits of rock or metal it may be attached to. This is called extracting. It's a very complicated process. First, you crush the gold into tiny pieces the size of gravel. Then, you mix it with water and run it through a series of leaching tanks. Leaching dissolves the gold out of the rock using a chemical solvent. Eventually, you move on to electro-winning. This is where you pass an electric current through the gold solution to get the gold to separate from the other metals and collect in a purer form. 7. The third step, smelting. After extracting comes smelting. The name sounds a bit like melting, and that's a clue as to what's involved. In this part of the process, you place the gold in a crucible and heat it up in a furnace until it's so hot it glows. Then, you add a chemical mixture known as flux to the molten material. When this happens, the gold separates from the rest of the metal it's mixed in with, leaving you with just gold. You can then pour the gold into molds, where it cools and solidifies into solid bars called doré bars, just like the way you make jello by leaving it in a mold. These doré bars, produced by smelting, are only roughly 95% pure, so they've still got a bit of a way to go. And that's why you need the next step. 8. The final step, refining. The final step of pure gold production is called refining. This is the last step where you remove all the impurities that remain after the smelting process. You start with your doré bars, and you add borax and soda ash to it. This divides the pure gold from other precious and less precious metals that might still be in the mixture. Then, it's important to check the purity of your product. A sample is taken to a lab for tests to measure the gold content. In most cases, the gold is still only 99.9% .9 pure. That's how difficult it is to produce 100% pure gold. The refined gold is then poured into molds so that it produces a solid bar. And, at last, the process is complete. You have pure gold. 9. What is pure gold used for? So, you have your pure gold bars. Now, what do you do with them? Well, one option is making them into gold coins. This process is called minting, and it takes place at mints across the world. There are mints all around the world, but the biggest is found right here in the US. The US National Mint was founded in 1972 and is divided across three different locations in West Point, Philadelphia, San Francisco, and Denver. So now you know where to take your gold bars to make them into coins. 10. Investing in pure gold. But before you make them into coins, you might want to think about this. Gold bars are considered a hugely valuable investment. People will often buy gold bars as a way of storing their money, just like putting it into a bank account. In the past three years is the first time that bullion is actually negative this year. Uh, so I think that the gold is an important part of your portfolio. This is because pure gold is so rare, you can be pretty sure it will always maintain its value. To give you an idea of how much it costs, the standard gold bar held in gold reserves is $512,680 at today's market price. Gold being a non-correlated asset to stocks and bonds, if stocks and bonds go down, huh, I sure am glad I got something that went the other way. And that's a lot of money for just one bar. Because of this, the value of gold has been used to decide the value of certain currencies. This is called the gold standard, when a unit of money is fixed to a certain weight of gold. So, gold helps support the economic system. That's another use of gold you might not have heard of. That's it for today's video. We hope you enjoyed learning all about the complex manufacturing process that creates this precious metal. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. You wouldn't want to miss what's coming next. And as always, give us a like and let us know in the comments what you found most interesting. We'll see you next time on Top Tech.